Hi, this is my review of Advanced Squad Leader Starter Kit number one. Uh, it's published by MMP, and um, my version that I've got here is the uh, 2014 version. So I thought I'd do this review um, partly to talk about um, using ASL Starter Starter Kit number one to, as a way of getting uh, involved in the ASL uh, game system, the ASL hobby, whether that's full ASL or just the ASL starter kits. And I think it's true to say that uh, starter kit number one is a very good place to start um, as a product to get into um, ASL. And I have I have been playing, um, I played squad leader when I was at school in our school war games club and I've played ASL in one form or another squad leader, ASL, ASL star kits, in one form or another for, um, goodness, for, goodness me, probably over 30 years, over 30 years. Um, and uh, I think it's a, it's a good product, well, a great product to start with. Um, but I'm going to talk a bit about the rule book at the end. Um, and I'll come to the what I think to the rule book and what I think to the rule book as a learning tool um, to help um, a new person coming in into the ASL hobby. So I'm just going to put that to one side. Normally I start with the rule books, but in this video I'm going to end with the rule book. Um, these are the two maps you get um, in the start kit. Um, I've put them side by, not on top of each other. To, to be honest with you, the vast majority of missions, scenarios that you'll be playing in starter kit will be one map, not two. There are Obviously, there are some exceptions, and even when you have the whole map, you may only be playing on a, a percentage of the map, a proportion of the map, rather than the whole thing. Now, I personally really like the graphic style of the maps for ASL. It's true to say that it has a very unique, sort of um, straightforward um, feel and style. I enjoy it, partly, if I'm being honest, because of the nostalgia value for me. Um, but also, it's very clear what the contents of all the the hexes are to me as a gamer. And I can instantly tell, I can instantly see, um, it has a very high readability, it's very user-friendly, um, and obviously, you know, the ASL has stood the test of time. And I would say, as a someone new to wargaming, someone new to the ASL hobby, I think the maps do a very functional job of explaining the contents of the hexes, which is the key thing, plus the centre point of the hex as well. Um, it would also be fair to say it maybe doesn't look as sophisticated as a lot of other tactical games um, in terms of its art treatment, in terms of the detail, um, but I still feel it has a resounding charm um, and a, a factor that is, is very playable as, as in terms of map design. Um, the other thing I like about ASL, um, just in general, if I'm being honest, and the start kit illustrates it beautifully well, is the maps aren't very big. They're not physically very large. Um, although the um, because of the scale, the actual um, areas they cover uh, are much larger than actually the physically map tells. Um, and what that means is that this comfort comfortably fits on you know a dining room table or a coffee table or your work desk or wherever you don't need a huge amount of physical space to play a full engaging game of ASL starter kit um, which for me is, is, is a bonus I actually often have um, the desk where I do a lot of my art for example I often have an ASL um, map and game in progress that I dip in and out playing it solo and I'll talk more about playing ASL solo or ASL starter kit sorry, uh, solo at the, uh, at the towards the end of the video but I think the maps do a great job they are printed on a heavy cardstock um, these two maps I have played extensively um, uh, both um, with with other, other ASL uh, players and with people who are who have never played ASL before and they have been played on uh, numerous times and um, uh, you know this this game's now this version uh, as I said 2014 I've had this since it pretty much came out so you know it's, it's um, 
stood the test of time well, I would say, in terms of its component quality. Um, there are, like I said, there are a few, um, I think there's at least one mission in Star Kit 1 that actually just combine both the two maps together and they're geomorphic, so they can be orchestrated in other, other interesting and different ways, which is, you know, which is great. But like I said, um, it has a, I like the art style. Um, I totally agree. It's functional. It's not as detailed maybe as some contemporary um, tactical games but I think it has a charm and it has a place. So next up, these are the scenario cards or sheets. They are double sided. You get six scenarios in the game. The scenario card illustrates the units that you're going to be using for both sides. They illustrate what uh, turns they come on. You have a little turn track there. The scenario um, illustrates what section of the board. So for example, scenario one, you're not using the whole, you're just using one board, you're not using the whole board, it also tells you sort of orientation of the of the uh, board on the table, any special rules and so forth, and a, a really wonderful um, piece of historical uh, context for you to help you formulate the sort of the narrative that comes through in the gameplay in your mind. Um, like I said, they are double sided. There's a, a good variety. Um, with this starter kit, you are playing predominantly um, either Axis forces. Um, including, for example, this one, you, your, your um, so Axis forces, Grenadiers, American Allied forces, you're playing the 101st uh, Division there, uh, Airborne, um, or Soviet forces as well. So um, there's a good mixture of, uh, the, you know, the three sort of main, three of the main nationalities of World War II. Um, they're all very different. Um, the scenarios are all uh, very asymmetrical in their design. I have yet to um, play, a, in my opinion, a bad scenario in, in the ASL starter kit range. Um, this is an example of a double map one, for example, but actually still using only a proportion of uh, both the two maps side by side. Um, now, it's also worth pointing out that you do get um, a bunch of additional scenarios that you can download from MMP's website that even with just starter kit one, you can play with just starter kit one. So there are other additional scenarios available from their website. You also get a couple of player aids. Um, this is the quick reference data card uh, and you'll see an acronym for that. Uh, if there's one thing about ASL and ASL starter kit, starter kit sorry, um, there is an acronym for nearly everything and that's one of the things that is um, one of the flavours, I would say, of, uh, of learning ASL. Um, but you do get some reference cards. They are useful without doubt. Um, especially for um, someone new learning the system, um, double-sided, and in particular, um, you're going to be using this side um, constantly through the game because it has the infantry fire table, the IFT, um, as well as the sort of key tables that you're going to be using. Now, in addition to that, um, I printed out, and I've included into my kit, the ASL Start Kit 1 Summary. Um, I downloaded this from Board Game Geek. Um, it is from Paul, and I'm going to try and pronounce your surname, Paul, I apologise, uh, Cornelison, um, but his, his BGG um, name is Largo68. Uh, this is version 3.1. Um, that's on the final section of Board Game Geek. And um, I'll touch on this a lot. Board Game Geek, um, when it comes to learning ASL starter kit, um, for the first, um, and I still use it now extensively, even though I've played hundreds of games of ASL Start Kit. Um, Board Game Geek is your friend, and the res resources that are there on the Board Game Geek are inv absolutely invaluable. Absolutely invaluable. So this is a great um, summary sheet. There are others from other contributors. Um, this is the one I just happened to use and print out, and I put it in the box. Um, it's to remind me, and it's to help me teach people who are new to, to the system, and I have found it invaluable doing that. Um, and uh, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely wonderful. And it is great that there's so much help on the internet available. Um, and then finally, I just want to show you what's in my box anyway. These are, I, as I said, you get a, there's a bunch of extra scenarios that you can print out. This one I printed out, uh, scenario number seven. So you don't get this in the game, but you just simply go to MMP's website, and you can print, you can download and print out a bunch of extra scenarios. And I've played these. Or in fact, I use this one 
um, as a as an introduction scenario, um, uh, and I've enjoyed this very much in in, in doing so. This one's a, this one's great. Um, so yeah, so you you do get the player aids that you need, but I would highly recommend it. Highly recommend. If I would say it's essential in learning ASL. Um, to go and do the research on Board Game Geek and download those extra player aids that are freely available, that are wonderful contributions from the uh, from the community. So I've got a game set up here, and it's just an example. I apologise profusely to the ASL aficionados watching the video. I have made this up um, just to really, f for the frame of the camera, if I'm being honest, and to illustrate some of the points. Um, and neither am I going to try and hopelessly explain the nuances and the rules system of ASL Starter Kit. What instead I will do is talk about the things you will be doing as a player when you're playing the game and learning the game. Um, these are my squads. They sort of represent a standard World War II squad for that nationality, be that 10 men or 12 men or whatever it happens to be. I have a squad leader here, single counter with a single man. That represents um, leadership within the squad, so you know, sergeant, a captain, etc., 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 etc. I've also got some support weapons um, here. For example, I've got a light machine gun. In this game, um, these would be MG38s. For example, earlier war. Um, somewhere I've got a into here. That's a light machine gun as well. I put down a heavy machine gun. There he is. Um, this is a medium, so a medium machine gun. So that would be an MG thirty eight on a on a tripod. Um, and uh, broadly speaking, in terms of the counters that you get in the game, um, as you can see, they're the they're, they're sort of standard ASL um, size. I would. I'm just going to reach over and get my tweezers. Um, I play ASL with um, the tweezers. The, the stacking in ASL starter kit's not it's not massive. There are lots of discussions about the the benefits or the detriments of stacking numerous squads together. Um, but the, the counters themselves, say compared to some of the contemporary, more modern um, tactical level games, the, the, the counters are a little bit small, smaller. I don't have any problems with them at all. I, I, I like the sort of, again, nostalgia, again, very clear readability, very clear the contents of the, of the, um, of the counters. And then you get a bunch of uh, gameplay counters. I've got some of them off, off camera there. Um, you get a bunch of gameplay counters that you're going to be using extensively. Um, this is quite neat and tidy. I've got it here in camera, but in, in actual fact, you'll be placing all manner of different gameplay orientated counters um, during your game. In terms of the actual turn structure, the actual turn structure is fairly straightforward, I would say. Um, the There's nuances, um, as you would expect with a game um, like this. But effectively, you go through your rally phase, so any um, you can go through that and restore morale to any of the troops. You have prep fire, which is where you're firing. You have um, movement phase. And one of the things I think ASL does very well um, is while you're moving your counters, let's say, for example, pick a nice easy example here. As you're moving, your, you're going, I want to run. I want to move this counter to, to this building. I don't know why you do that, but let's just say you do. And as you go into sort of open open ground, the other player can fire at you, and there's a whole manner of different ways that works. Um, and it can result in you um, taking fire and sort of retreating back, or you might be able to get through and make it through to there and so forth. So in that in that respect, um, the game has, I would say, I mean, a lot of what I like about ASL Start Kit is what I like about ASL. Um, it has a it has a gameplay that I would describe as the player needs to be very, very thoughtful in what every single thing they do, the order in which they do it, and very deliberate in what they do. And I would say that Starter Kit um, definitely has that feeling. Um, there are so many nuances and so many mechanics. I, I'm not going to go through them all. Um, but effectively, you are moving your squads uh, sometimes impeded, sometimes taking enemy fire as you do so. You are firing at the enemy, they are returning fire at you, and you are engaging in close combat when you actually move into the hex with the enemy, hopefully um, having softened them up a little bit before you do so. Um, and effectively, that's what you actually do. And it's the nuances, it's the turn structure, 
It's understanding the mechanics um, and understanding how to best utilize those mechanics in every single tactical situation that you are in, which, which for me is what helps define the ASL start kit game system. And actually, to some extent, that defines the ASL system. Um, and it's a, it's a very engrossing, very, very, very focused experience. Um, as you noticed in this example here, and this is true of all the scenarios and all the counters you get, there are no armor, there's no armor, there's no AFVs, there's no Shermans or T-34s. Starter Kit 1 focuses on infantry squad combat. And for me, that is, in my opinion, the best way to learn ASL. And this is why I think ASL Starter Kit number 1 and Starter Kit number 2 as the start kit number two has a strong infantry focus, so it, does in, it brings in, uh, you know, uh, 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 bigger bigger weapons and weapons that requ require teams to operate them. But start kit number one is a great choice because it makes you focus on squad combat, which at its heart is what, for me, um, one of the strongest components of ASL. I'm not I'm not saying they don't like the way they do armor and tanks and things like that, but. It, because it's it's what you get, and the infantry is the heart of this game system, and so that's why I describe it as it's it's a very focused game. And as a player, as someone learning ASL, will focus you in learning it and playing it with other ASL start kit players on that experience, which I think is absolutely absolutely key. Which brings me nicely on to the next topic that I want to talk about, which is the ASL start kit number one rulebook. Now. The rule book is not a huge number of pages. Um, I don't know how many pages it is. Let's have a quick look. 12, 14, about 12 pages of rules. Um, and I would say, I'll go on a limb and say it is, it's well written. But I would also say it's not terribly user friendly. And I would also say if you are wanting to learn ASL starter kit, maybe with a broader view of learning ASL, um, you have to start here because this is the rule book you get in starter kit one. But I don't think it's the best way to learn ASL starter kit. Um, but what I would say, it talks you through everything. It describes all the definitions that I talked a little bit about earlier. And there are a lot to learn. Um, and it talks you through all the different phases of the game. And it actually does include everything. It's just not always super obvious as it could be. How important some of the exact wording is. It also gives you plenty of examples. Again, which is great. What I have found, especially with someone brand new to the system, the one, someone who, you know, we're not talking about people who played ASL, back in the day and they haven't played for a few years and they're trying to get back into it. Um, what I have found is that there are so many nuances that are in the rules that when you read through, they just don't have the impact that really they should. And um, if ever there was a game where, and this is well, a well thumbed rule book. Um, and uh, yeah, when I've, shown it to new people and I've given this to someone new and they've kind of went, oh yeah, I think I know how to play it. They start playing it and, you know, um, it's, yeah, they, they've, got, they've got a lot to, they've got a lot to learn. Now you could say, well, what's, you know, what's the best way to learn ASL start kit then? Uh, honestly, like a lot of games, but I think this is especially true of this game, in my opinion, the best way is to be taught by someone face to face. Um, I think you get a lot from someone taking you through uh, exactly how all these phases work, what options you've got, and some um, advice on the best tactical use of those options that you have as a player. They are all in here. You just kind of have to figure them out. Um, and if you're, you know, because of the situation in the world that we're in with COVID and whatnot, it may be that you can't do that or you don't feel comfortable to, to do that. Well, I'll come to that in a second. But um, I think, I think of all the war games I've ever played with someone else, if ever I was like, this is the game, really the best way to, is to, to just have someone teach you, you know, literally teach you at the, at the table, it's ASL. And it's ASL starter kit. I'll be honest with you. I don't think... 
there are other um, some of the rule book versions in some of the later start kits. So start kit number three, I actually think does a slightly better job than start kit number one. Um, but even so, I still think, for, for in my opinion, um, there's a, there's a, you, you'll gain so much more by going to an ASL uh, war game club where ASL is played, regardless whether it's full ASL or starter kit. Um, you'll gain so much more from just asking someone just to talk you through the phase, just just simply the, the game phase and what all those things mean and how best to use them, you know. Um, and then you can learn a lot um, through experience and there's no substitute for experience in ASL. Um, but like I said, the rule book's well written. It's all there. You just kind of have to figure it out. And it's not the most... It's... <laughs> It's just not, and it's partly the, the way the game is, if I'm being honest, you know, it's not the most user-friendly when you've never played before. Although actually, um, in a way, actually getting ASL to start get to the table when you first buy it and start reading through the rulebook is actually, I would say, pretty quick. What you'll find is you'll sort of muddy your way through a little bit and you won't have the understanding that really you need as the player. You'll be playing the game and you'll be rolling some dice and you're invariably having fun. And there'll invariably be a rich narrative that's coming through, but you'll probably not fully appreciate the the nuances of the game in terms of how best to use every situation you're in. Like I said, this is a game about fundamental decision making and the repercussions of that. If you play, um, it's also probably worth pointing out if you're playing ASL Start Kit number one, any of them, and you're completely new and you're playing someone who's been playing the game for a long time. Um, it can be quite a punishing experience from, I would say, um, that's something to bear in mind, but the rule book's there. It's, it's, it's well written. The information is in there. You just have to kind of dig it out. Um, but thankfully because of the community, um, the very active community and a lot of the same, I see a lot of the same feedback about ASL start kit, like what's the best way to learn. Thankfully there are, uh, phenomenal resources available to you in learning how to play ASL Start Kit number one. So thankfully, and I'm just showing my um, screen here for a second, I just want to talk a bit about this um, is a download from Jay Richardson. It is the ASL or is an ASL Start Kit tutorial. I um, called it the Start Kit tutorial, which is how I feel about it. Um, this is a a wonderful PDF um, that you can download from Board Game Geek, which does a phenomenal job of talking you through a with more clarity, with more detail, um, more uh, slightly slight more hand holding, which I think is important, especially for someone new. How ASL Start Kit actually works and helps give you context for how it works, which I think is is as important, if not more important. And it um, this does it for all of Start Kit. So there are things in this document that you, you will not need for Start Kit number one, um, but there are definitely things that are, so for example, um, uh, ordnance isn't in Start Kit number one. Um, vehicles are not in Start Kit number one. But saying that there are a great wealth of information in here. It is, don't be, um, uh, put off by the length of the document. It is a, a, a massive 132 pages, um, but it does actually illustrate in a way that one of the great things about ASL Star Kit is the level of depth in the game, the level of nuances in the game, the level of understanding. So you are, you are by buying Starter Kit number one, you are taking the first step into the world of ASL, albeit at Starter Kit level, um, uh, but it is that that world is 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 a huge amount of fun, um, but B is a very engrossing subject that is um, that gives you the depth of study, which which is one of the things I like about ASL in general, um, start kit included. And what this document will do, it will teach. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Um, it will teach you through the basics of play, what all the counters do. As you can see, it is um, there are examples um, of what all this means in the game. Um, it refers back to the rule book. Um, it is incredibly well written um, and brilliantly 
detailed and iterated on. I don't want to spend this YouTube video talking how wonderful I think this is, but basically I want to illustrate the point of you get the rule book in the game. It's you know it's there. It's it's good. This, in my opinion, this is what you need to be doing. Read through the rule book by all means, but I would go straight to this PDF and take your time and go through um, section by section because not only will it help you understand, and it actually, um, I've done this um, in doing the research for this video. I sat there with the game, I put the map out, did exactly the things that's in this document, and I was like, this is a really good way of learning um, ASL Starter Kit. I am sure there are other tutorials from other contributors. This one worked really well. I thought this one really works, works really, really well. Um, it worked really well for me. I absolutely love it. And it, I, I want to call it out because I wanted to explain how how great the community is at helping new players into the hobby, um, how much wealth of information there is. You do not need to, if you're thinking about buying ASL, ASL Start Kit and you're kind of worried about um, having to learn all this stuff, a lot of it is... Uh, it, is is flows pretty naturally once you understand once you've had just someone talk you through and explain it um, and I think this 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 does it brilliantly does that brilliantly well so if you're interested in getting a starter kit you um, or you've just bought it or you bought it and you're struggling to sort of get through it and understand and learn the game system then highly recommend you downloading these kind of materials they will help invariably. There are plenty of tutorial videos on YouTube too um, from a whole host of contributors and content creators. Again, it's a great way to learn. Don't, um, I think of all the war games I have, all the war games I have ever played, if ever there was one where I would say to people, go and do some, go and do, get additional materials, do additional research, just into the mechanics, not talking about the history, just the mechanics, it would be um, just ASL in general, but I would include ASL Star Kit into that. So some concluding thoughts. Um, if you're interested in learning about ASL, I think the Starter Kit system is a good springboard to full ASL. I think it's a great system within its own right. I would say Starter Kit number one is a great way to get into that. Um, sometimes it's not in print, um, but normally one or two is in print. Um, don't be tempted by number three, in my opinion. It has a lot of shiny things like tanks and ordnance weapons, but I think there's a lot to learn um, for someone new. Um, saying that, if you can only get number three, then you know go for it and just download all the additional scenarios uh, that are more focused on infantry, more focused on um, squads. I think, for me, that's the best way to learn. Um, pound for pound, this is not an expensive product. I think I paid about £25 here in the UK. Um, so it's an inexpensive way to dip your toe into that world to see if you enjoy it, see if it's for you. Um, I am on, I'm very biased. I love ASL and I love the ASL um, start kit system. I love the way it plays, the way it makes you think, the focus that the game has. And um, uh, I would also say that I have enjoyed playing this solo. Now, I would caveat on that and say it's a different experience playing solo. Um, I think you can get a rich narrative solo. Um, I think you just lose a lot of the nuances of really, 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 really thinking about every single thing you do. And as I've said, I describe ASL as quite a punishing system. If you make a mistake and you're playing against someone who knows how to play, they will punish you for that error that judgment error that decision you've made um some of that of course can come through the dice roll as well but i have played it solo i enjoy it solo um and um mostly because i just enjoy playing the game i love the components i love the feel of it the tone of it the whole thing really um and i think you it can be it can be played solo. there's no solo bot or anything like that and i think there are other tactical if you want a solo experience i think there are other tactical games that serve up better products for that if i'm being honest but saying that if you really want to get into asl and um, it's a very engaging part of the uh, wargaming hobby um there's a lot to do in the hop in the asls even in the starter kit hobby i mean we've now got four starter kits um there's a whole 
massive amount of scenarios to play. There's a couple of expansion packs. Um, I always wish there was more, um, but there's a huge amount of content all there already um, for you to enjoy, and it's a lot of fun. I think the ASL Starter Game is a fun game once you understand it and you've learned it. And that camp, that process, I think use, like I said earlier, utilize the tools that you have as a gamer. So board game geek, uh, YouTube tutorial videos, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, like I said, I'm biased. I love ASL. Um, uh, I think the Start Kit system is a brilliant system within its own right. I've, I thoroughly enjoy playing it. I thoroughly enjoy teaching people it. Um, is yeah, it's a lot of and it, like I said, I I played squad leader when I was a teenager, so there's a lot of fond memories of just the whole system in general, you know. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching. Um, highly recommended, high, high recommendation for me. I see a lot of people ask about want to get into ASL starter kit or ASL. What's the best way? This is your product. Um, pretty straightforward, really. And those additional online resources that I mentioned. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching. Um, as ever.